Welcome back to the podcast. This is Layla Rose, and today we have an exciting topic, which is the solar eclipse. Um, I'm going to share basically all the knowledge that I have regarding the topic of the eclipses, but also the return of the divine feminine, because that's what it is. This is what this event is all about. Um, and you've probably guessed it when there's a lot of fear mongering. <laughs> I mean, we kind of learned that lesson um, since 2020, right? And for a lot of people, it's beyond that year. But um, when there is a lot of fear mongering around a topic, it's usually a sign that there is a portal or there's something that's going to happen energetically. And in order to make sure that the vast majority uh, stays in fear, because that this is how the elite has been keeping people um, unconscious and just, you know, this is how they've been controlling people. Um, this is the main reason why there is a lot of fear around these topics and you know you can just look in the media right now and everybody's freaking out and it's just there's a sense of chaos um but the great news is that when there is even a small group of people especially women um who don't buy into fear who use their um, God self or goddess self um, to really focus on creating the new earth, the new paradigm. Well, even if it's a small group of people, we're more powerful than the masses because um, usually a woman who uses darkness, so she becomes source, right? She, she becomes one with source. She's actually more powerful than a million women, who do not access to these types of powers, right? So if a woman, for example, worships God outside of herself, um, this is the, the, the example, you know, a, a woman who uses darkness is going to be more powerful than a, a million women that are like that. Like, that's crazy, right? So when it comes to the codes, you know, what does April 8th represent when it comes to the solar eclipse? Uh, what's the connection with Lilith? You know, there's a lot of things I want to share today. So April 8th is the solar eclipse, right? If you haven't heard about it. And so the number eight is connected to the infinity symbol, but it's also because we're also in the year eight in numerology. So 2024, right? The number eight is also associated with Kali uh, and Saturn. So Saturn is uh, the planet that rules karma and justice. So this is why a lot of people are getting their karma this year in 2024. Uh, and by the way, the word karma means action. So uh, a lot of times people think karma is bad. Well, it depends <laughs> it depends on what you did in the past. You know what I'm saying? You know, it really depends on how you've been treating the divine feminine because that's what it comes down to. So, um, yeah, so Saturn is ruling um, these topics, right? And Saturn, by the way, is also used within the government structure. There is a lot of Saturnian symbols when it comes to the justice system, uh, the police, uh, I mean, they're using the colors, the symbolism, oh, the military as well. So Saturn is a feminine energy um, that is very, uh, it's all about discipline, right? There isn't emotion, just for example, compared to the Venusian energy, which is all about art and pleasure and emotions and love, right? Saturn is a bit, I would say, cold compared to this type of energy and because it's also associated with Kali so Kali is the goddess 
of destruction, but what she does is she destroys the power imbalances. And this is also what Lilith does. So a lot of times people can compare Kali to Lilith, even though they're not from the same culture, but they represent the same type of energy. Um, when it comes to Lilith, because, you know, she's a big, 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 um, important player within this collective energy the solar eclipse so Lilith is connected to the goddess Inanna uh, so the goddess of heaven and earth but Lilith is a very specific energy so if you don't know the story obviously with Adam you know Lilith refused to submit to Adam she actually wanted to be equal as him she didn't want to you know boss him around <laughs> she just wanted to be equal um but the patriarchy doesn't like this Lilith type of energy right because they don't want women to be equal they want women to submit to the masculine actually it's not even masculine energy it's the wounded masculine energy um because the divine masculine wants an equal partner so it, it right so it, it, it's not connected to that um so there are a lot of signs that the Lilith energy is coming up to the surface like even in the mainstream media you've probably noticed that there's a lot of pink especially hot pink and red so these are the colors of Lilith and um some people might feel the urge to dress with these colors or to have these colors around them um, because what happens is that her energy um, is going to destroy obviously what is not aligned with mother nature and yeah I, I don't want to wish negative things to people but I'm just explaining it as like a factual thing so everybody who is not aligned with the divine feminine or has been exploiting the divine feminine energy within their business or in their personal life is going to get their, com their karma in 2024, especially starting from April 8th. So, um, yeah, so this is what Lilith does. She really punishes the misuse of power and she really enforces the balance of power so it's actually a positive event uh, but obviously it brings a lot of chaos you know anytime we think about like a dark goddess uh, energy such as Kali or Lilith there has to be chaos because we cannot build without destroying the old structure and the old foundation and obviously that's like a a, a way to explain it to explain it that's not literal um the by the way the qualities of Lilith which is so important when it comes to sacred work so SW <laughs> I can't say the full um meaning of that word but you know what I'm talking about so when it comes to Lilith working with her so wearing her sigil or doing a little ritual especially if you're in the SW industry is so important because if not your energy might be harvested by men and you might get exploited and abused and obviously it's very hard to get legal justice when it comes to these things because it's you know it's not perceived as sacred anymore <laughs> just like it used to be a few thousand years ago so Lilith has a lot of vampiric qualities right she a lot of times she's compared to a vampire because she has authority over what we call um paris i can't say that word <laughs> parasitic entities such as incubus and succubus right uh so she has power over um demonic entities basically this is what it means um especially knowing that the majority of men have those entities connected to them especially those that are unconscious that are not spiritual a lot of times they don't even know they have these entities and it just makes them crave SEX so much um, and they don't have any morals or uh, yeah there's no guilt or shame they, they just get very manipulative when it comes to SEX because 
they have these sorts of entities controlling them, right? So with that being said, let me just think of what else I wanted to share about April 8th. Okay, so let me come back to April 8th because it's a it's a very important date, by the way, um, because it's a solar eclipse. And a lot of times I'm hearing a lot of people say, you know, don't manifest with these types of energies, right? Because it's very chaotic. Um, the cool thing about e eclipses is that there are amplifiers. So obviously, if someone is in a situation in their life where there's a lot of chaos or there's a change, right? Like they're moving places. Um, I don't know, like a big change or getting a divorce. Obviously, you might not want to use the eclipse energy because you're going to amplify that, <laughs> right? Um, so I guess these are just the exceptions. Um, if you're going through change, you might want to do a grounding ritual um, before or after the eclipse, just to make sure that you don't amplify the chaos that's already happening in your, in your life. But eclipses are good if you want to have a breakthrough, for example, in your love life, in your business, and it's been very stagnant. Um, this is the type of energy you want to use to um, have this type of breakthrough. So eclipses are usually connected to new beginnings, breakthroughs, you know, letting go of karmic contracts. And the way you want to work with this type of energy is through alchemy, right? Because you want to transform, you want to use, and here's the thing, even if you're going through something that's very chaotic in your life, you also want to be, um, you also might want to use alchemy as well to change the circumstances and, and harvest this chaotic negative energy, for example, into something more positive. I feel like that's the way to um to be more sovereign as a spiritual being instead of being in fear like oh no let me not use this eclipse energy oh no something bad's gonna happen like obviously anything that you believe in is gonna be true um but obviously when it comes to any type of manifestation i always advocate for a regulated nervous system and grounded nervous system prior to doing any type of alter or manifestation right and this is something that i get into so much detail in my unstuck workshop and i get into the practical steps of alchemy because um yeah if you if you do things out of order then obviously there's going to be more chaos in your life right um, fun fact about the eclipse, um, when it comes to the Beyonce new song, yeah, Texas Hold'em, I mean, new song a few months ago, um, there's actually, you can check out the lyrics, but she talks about the solar eclipse. Um, obviously we know that Beyonce and a lot of artists are, um, witches, <laughs> but obviously they're not going to say it to people. Um, but they they use music to do rituals. Um, and for some reason, a lot of people think it's negative. Well, it, it depends. It depends on the lyrics. If, they're, if they are empowering, then of course you want to sing them. Uh, but obviously, if you're being mindful and you're listening to some lyrics of some songs and you're like, that's not positive, you know, um, yeah, if a song, you know, tells you over, like, if you're singing a song, for example, and it says, you know, I'm obsessed with my ex and blah, 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 like, obviously, you don't want to be, you know, lighting some candles and singing that type of disempowering, <laughs> you know, type of lyrics. Um, but yeah, so sh her song really talks about uh, the solar flares and the eclipse and, and what's going to happen. And yeah, she's she's a very powerful, very advanced witch. So it just makes sense that she would plan, you know, her song and make sure that the song comes out prior to the eclipse. Um, but she basically just explains what's going to happen and how the there's going to be like a heat wave um, coming towards the earth, which is basically the solar flares that we're getting. And this causes, by the way, 
a lot of different symptoms to people. Personally, I've been feeling so tired, so exhausted. Um, and I've been honoring my body, honoring the divine feminine, and I've been resting and, um, you know, drinking a lot of water, but obviously staying healthy and sober, especially on April 8th, because uh, a lot of people are going to feel the need to drink on that day. Um, especially people that are unconscious that are that don't know what's happening right now on the planet they're just going on with their day-to-day um they're also going to be affected and uh, you know unfortunately when someone is at a different level of consciousness you can't really tell people what to do right because they're not going to understand so you really have to focus on yourself uh focusing on like i said drinking water staying healthy staying away from animal products as much as possible because they're very dense and very heavy and sometimes they are also karmic um if you feel like you know eating some sort of fish you know just do you i'm just saying you know when there's a lot of solar flares and there's a lot of um energy that's you know ascending on this planet it just feels better when you eat lighter and you have more liquids than um than food but that's just you know a, like a, a little tip but obviously you can do whatever you want um And I guess the sad part of the eclipse energy is that as we are going through this collective awakening and there's waves of people, you know, waking up to the truth, um, people are also getting very, very sick. Some people are getting very sick, especially if they're completely unconscious and they eat a lot of junk food, um, people that have addictions, like if you're immune system is a bit weak it's just gonna get weaker you know Lilith is that type of energy that's going to give strength to the people who already have like mental strength right um she's going to give good karma basically to the people who have been you know working in the shadows behind the scene you know helping other people focusing on our own inner demons and and doing our own thing right and obviously she's going to punish the corporations she's going to punish the people who have been exploiting and abusing mother earth um and so the 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 sad part i would say because you know i'm still an empath like i don't wish ill to people um but there's gonna gonna be a lot of people getting sick and just um yeah there's gonna be a wave of people leaving the earth um which i guess you know is part of the the cycle of death and rebirth and it's part of life as well um and we just have to you know focus on ourselves because here's the thing if you know people especially like friends and family members you've probably had your lessons <laughs> regarding that since 2020 you know you cannot change people who don't want to change um if people have entities connected to them and they refuse to acknowledge it then there's nothing you can do besides you know just focusing on yourself sending them you know some love far 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 away from you uh keeping your distance and really focusing on your own dharma and focusing on your own um purpose in life and happiness and uh yeah just your own peace of mind (laughs) this is what it is all right so that's it for today's episode there was a lot of information hopefully you took (laughs) you took some notes um but obviously if you have any questions regarding the this type of energy just let me know in the comments and i'll see you tomorrow for our next episode bye